Hi everyone, it's Nick here from Notero. Today we are going to show you how to set up your practitioner account. If you're both the admin and a practitioner and your account is linked together, you'll need to switch over to the practitioner account. So the very first thing you need to do is click on your, your initials or your photo in the top right corner. If you're a practitioner, you don't have to worry about this step. So I'm going to go ahead and click on my photo and right beside my role where it says admin, I'm just going to click switch and I'm going to switch over to the practitioner side. So I know I'm on the practitioner side because the settings icon is no longer filled in. So as a practitioner, when you log into your account, you will then, um, for the first time, they'll just be initials. And so you'll click on those initials and we will start with the profile section. And with the profile section, um, if I click edit, you notice that I already have a photo here. So um, you can add a photo if you uh, want to. You can display it for online booking as an example. So make sure your first and last name are correct. You can switch, you can change your email here. This automatic login. So again, if you're at ad admin, you can set this value to either automatically log into your practitioner or your admin account. This is where you change your password and I already added my signature. So if you need to add your signature, you would click the, the button. There'll be a button here to say add signature. I suggest that you do add your signature on a mobile device. Uh, it's just a lot easier to sign it than with a mouse. Um, once you do that, the signature is going to appear on invoice and notes. So if you're required to have your signature on the invoice and notes, you'll need to add it uh, to this section. That's the very first thing that you'll need to do. Next is two-factor authentication. So it's an additional step when logging in. So you can set that up. Um, and it's just a, a setup here and you'd go through the two-factor authentication. You'll just go through the steps. And so what this does is it requires an additional code when logging in. So it's, a, it's an additional layer of security. The next is auto logout. So you can set this value for as long as seven days. So with, um, when your account is inactive for less than seven days, you'll stay logged in. So if I want to set this, say, for one hour, um, it will log me out after one hour. So I'm just going to turn that back over to seven days and you'll just save that value of whatever is appropriate. Next is professional ID numbers. So this could be anything from insurance numbers to association numbers to professional numbers. And this will appear under your name on notes and receipts. And so it's just simply as add new, you'd put the label and the professional ID number in here. So in here, you can see that I have a number of numbers um, already associated to this account. And then practitioner taxes. So if you collect taxes, again, you will associate uh, those, those uh, taxes. So for example, the clinic may uh, collect tax and you also may collect tax, but you're the one who will be remitting that tax. You're then going to associate your practitioner tax number and the taxes will then be allocated to the practitioner or yourself rather than the clinic. And these are just notification preferences that we have within the, the clinic itself. So you can turn on all these notification preferences um, and they're both email and in-app notification. So the in-app notifications, you'll notice this little bell here and any red dot indicates. So if I click on this, uh, you'll see that I have a number of uh, notifications here uh, as an example. So then you can turn on notifications that you do or do not want to receive. And then as a, uh, there's a section down here and it relates to insurance. If you're, this is, this just happens to be on the Canadian side. If you're on the American side, there's some values that you can put here on the Canadian side. Um, you, you also determine how you're connected uh, to TELUS Health. So again, this connect, this, uh, this clinic just happens to be set up for, for Canadian profile. The next is a calendar section. And if you have a Google calendar, you can connect directly to Google. And the benefits of connecting to Google is that your calendar will get updated um, in real time. And once you connect to Google, you can either send just your events from Notero to your Google calendar, or you can bring your Google calendar also into Notero. So you'll have an option. Um, once you, once you connect your Google, Google calendar, you can, you'll have an option to, um, enable two way syncing. If you don't use the Google calendar and you use another third party calendar, like, a, like the Apple calendar, you can uh, generate a link. So here's a link as an example, and you can um, add that to your, um, as an example, your Apple calendar and your Notero events will appear in your Apple calendar. Um, again, it's only a one-way sync. It only sends 
the Notero events to your Apple Calendar, again, as the example that I'm, uh, I'm suggesting here. So Google Calendar is a two-way sync. Um, using the link here is only a one-way sync. And then there's some other settings that you have control over whether you allow cancellations, the minimum cancellation notice. In this case, people can cancel one up, one, one up, one hour prior to the appointment. And these are um, scheduling limits that you have for online booking. So a, a minimum lead time is similar to allow cancellation. So someone can um, book one hour prior to the appointment. And I'm, I've set it for four weeks as a maximum lead time, meaning that they can only they can only book um, four weeks out and then there's some workload as well so maximum appointments today or maximum hours that you want to work and whether you want to set cluster booking and cluster booking um, clusters appointments around existing appointments on your calendar so it helps with um, spacing on your calendar and so you know um, it prevents large gaps or, or breaks within your calendar so if that's something you want to turn on you can turn that on and then the last section is just a, a charting section we have um, um, within the clinic that you're associated with, uh, if they have a number of note templates. So for example, let's just say you're in a multidisciplinary clinic and they have a note template for chiropractors and physios and massage and you're a physiotherapist, you might want to set yours to, um, you know, in, in this case, I don't have that set up like that, but you might want to set it to the physiotherapy template that, that you would use. And again, the admin would set those templates up and then you can default. It doesn't mean you can't access all these templates. It just means that when you're creating a note, you'll have one that's defaulted, the one that you use the most often. So I'd suggest that if you are with a clinic that has multiple templates, just pick one that you would use most often. And then clinical, clinical note access. So if you wanted to make your notes private, you would select it to author only. If you just want practitioners within the clinic to see it, you'd select the practitioners. And if you want all staff to see it, you can select all staff. Because you're the author of the note, you can change it on a note basis, on a per note basis. So you can change this. So this, this just means that all notes will be set to that, but you can go into a specific note and make it author only if, if you want. Okay. And then last is just snippets. These are shortcuts um, that you can put content or repeated information that you would use on a note. So for example, um, this one down here is an easy one to follow. So if I had a standard back treatment that I would use over and over again, I can create this shortcut like this is back treatment and type this in on a note with a forward slash prior uh, before it. And uh, I can just hit edit and it'll dump this information onto a note. So it adds it very quickly to a note. So if you have repetitive information that you use over and over again, you can add what's called snippets. And snippets are just, um, you know, again, that repetitive information or content that you'd want on a note that you use or type over and over again. It doesn't have to be um, uh, treatment related. It can be phrases, you know, the, the patient came in complaining of low back pain. Could be a phrase that you use over and over again. And again, you can create a shortcut and add that shortcut to a note, which would then add the, the content very quickly. And so snippets are a, a quick way of, uh, you know, putting that repetitive information on a note. So that's it. So that's how you would set up your um, account for Notero and then you're ready to go. And there's other videos that will help you, you know, everything from, you know, uh, there's there's videos on, on how to use snippets and, and snapshots and other shortcuts and other ways um, to create notes. And so I'd encourage you to watch those videos. There is a video on creating a note uh, very quickly. Um, and so we have a lot of tools built in here uh, for you as a practitioner. And so I'd encourage you to watch those videos. So thank you for watching and please click subscribe if you'd like to be notified as new videos are released.